Thanks. Uh, Scott yeah. Morrison, our number one ticket holder, um, has resigned from politics and in the same uh, swipe of the brush has re resigned from being the Sharks' number one ticket holder. Um, I think that was probably a good thing from, from him. Maybe a little bit of writing was on the wall and, and decided to, to step out before anything happens and, and he gets a bit of egg on his face. Um, but that leaves us with no number one ticket holder. So number one tickets, what are they? Who are they? Do we need one? Let's let's have a bit of a, a deep dive. Now, it's a shame that Williams has come back because I was going to ask the group a question and I'm sure he knows the answers. <laughs> um, but how many number one ticket holders do you think we've had? Five. <laughs> this is the exact number I was going to say. We'll go four then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got four. We've got four. So it's obviously not something that the, someone needs to be Default. in the seat at all times. Um, can you name the four? No. <laughs> no. Peter, was no. Peter Costello one? Yeah. Peter Costello was one. Yes, yes. Peter Costello. Kathy Freeman. Yep. Yeah. I, I know the body. I know. I definitely know the body. Kathy was Freeman. The body was. Kathy yeah. Freeman. Yep. And Scomo. And Scomo. Scomo. Correct. So um, that's Wikipedia. Little, data, but yeah. little, I'll tell you what. Little, I wouldn't yeah. mind being a, being uh, ticket holder number two when the body was uh, the first ticket holder. That's for sure. Yeah, it's 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 like certainly not something that the NRL <laughs> has embraced too much. It certainly seems to be more of an AFL thing. Um, the NRL do do it sporadically. It, but as I mentioned, it's not really something that all clubs have number one ticket holders, and not all clubs have t number one ticket holders at all times. Um, of that, obviously Scott Morrison now stepping down. How many prime ministers do you think have held the number one ticket holder across the NRL? Two. I'm going to go three. Yeah, I think three. I'm going to say Johnny Howard for the Dragons. I'm going to say Paul Keating for the Bulldogs. Uh, obviously, ScoMo for us. Malcolm Turnbull for the Roosters, probably not. They've got a lot of... Uh, the Roosters, they've got that many heavy fans anyway. They've got about 12 fans and they're all billionaires. So um, they probably don't want to offend any of those. Uh, what's his name? Abbott, was he? He's a big Manly fan. Did he have a crack it over there? Um, yeah. Yeah. Bob Catter doesn't Williams count. Williams is pretty I'm, good. Pretty yeah, good, no, mate. No, no, There's eight. Was. Eight. Eight. Oh, actually, Kevin, Kevin Rudd, did he? Was he Broncos, yep. maybe? Yep. So we've got Bob Hawke at Canberra. I couldn't find oh, Keating. Wow. Uh, John Howard at St. George Illawarra. So Keating uh, was a, yeah, well, he's a huge Bulldogs fan. but Yeah, I couldn't find him listed anywhere. Um, Scott Hanson went, yeah, when Kevin John Rudd Howell at Broncos. Julia Gillard at the Storm. <laughs> Tony Abbott and Manly Seagulls, Malcolm Turnbull at the Roosters, oh, there you um, go. Scotty Morrison at Cronulla Sharks, and now Anthony Albanese at the oh, South Sydney oh, Rabbitohs. Obviously, so obviously, that's, that's uh, yeah. Look, look what's happened to them. Yeah, jury's jury's still out. Obviously, a little bit of um, uh, confirmation there on Keating if he was a Bulldogs number one ticket holder. But that's every Prime Minister since Howard has been a yeah. number one ticket holder well, for their Julie local. Gillard. Julie Gillard, I'd say that's a. I think Molly Meldrum was was probably on the outer, and they probably replaced it, him because he was always the uh, their number one ticket holder wow. down there. And Gillard's a big Western Bulldogs fan in the AFL, so yeah. Well, I don't know here we here we go, Williams. So. Here we go, buddy. What are, what are the rules for a number one ticket holder? Um, no idea. Basically, basically there are no rules. It's it's just more of a, a symbolic gesture. Uh, and as you've said, some clubs, despite the name, have had more than one number one ticket holder at the same time. Let me guess, Notably, the Roosters? They fit them all no. under their number one ticket holder. Yeah, all of them under their sombrero. Um, <laughs> fun, funnily enough, Melbourne Storm with Molly and oh, Julia Gillard, storms. both were number yeah, one at the same time. So one of them was oh. in the filing cabinet out the back and the other one yes. was up the front, I'm guessing. Yes. Um, the second some, book. some have... Some have sold their number one ticket <laughs> out the uh, seat to the highest bidder. <laughs> um, we won't go there. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, some people sell, some clubs have sold, you know, number one ticket holder status um, to the highest bidder in auctions and fundraisers. Um, and I think that that's obviously, we, we, might, we might sort of, 
nicks those number one ticket holders for many records. As, as Mike Doring just bought his way into wow. that position. Has he? Has he indeed? Uh, I'll take my hat off to ScoMo. Sorry to butt, uh, to butt in, but the fact that he copped a bit of heat, I don't know, the, the timing with my, my hard quiz uh, shade that I threw at him, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, maybe the truth comes out. He goes, look, yeah, no. Nah. Uh, good. I mean, on a side point, I think I was talking to Baldo about this the other night. I, I genuinely don't think he was a fan to begin with. I remember we were there in 2008 when I believe it was, uh, who was the, the incumbent member, Malcolm Kerr, I think, or uh, sorry, Bruce Baird was there and he was a legitimate fan. Uh, and you could tell he was happy to be amongst it. And good old ScoMo was like a deer in the headlights. But to his credit, uh, after realising the, the the political, uh, I suppose, uh, football benefit the fear of being a, a fan of the local team and the development that he was anti at the start and all that he, he became uh, a lot more involved uh, and i think he was a i suppose a semi-genuine fan gusting genuine fan in the end there and i thought i wish him all the best but it's good that he made the decision and took it out of our hands rather than being that ex-poly former pm sitting there going taking the handouts waving the scarf who waves the scarf anyway but but doing that uh, and then going, hey, is he still relevant? The fact that he took that decision and, and did that, I think, uh, hats well, off to you. Funny you should say that, Williams. Should there be any rules? Should there be a, a term uh, that you hold the ticket for and, and that be, is officially extended or ends? Uh, well, that way you avoid any breakups and any messy, are, there still any, are they still a ticket holder? Because uh, if you remember Peter Costello, he was kind of the number one ticket holder for quite some time and just sort of faded away and people stopped talking about it. I don't think it was ever actually sort of revoked and said, oh, well, he's he's not the guy anymore. It's just sort of, he was it for until... Kathy Freeman you know, took it and Peter didn't, yeah. I suppose, didn't, he didn't feel passionate enough to call up and go, hey, I'm Hill's still here too. He's another one, I suppose, a Melbourne knight that... He was needed yeah. a league team and jumped on the needed, bandwagon. Needed a liberal, safe liberal seat, I think, and and yeah. so hooked up his wagon. Oh, another one, if you're talking number one ticket holders, Helen Clark was a massive Warriors fan. I think still is New Zealand PM, and I, I think that the game we were talking about the the '99 classic against them. I remember the commentary, Graham Hughes like panning to the the crowd and talking about Helen Clark um, being a yeah a, 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 even before she was PM was. Was it uh, so? I suppose that's a, a international number one ticket holder. If you want to talk about that, but there you right. go. There you the go. Two Take grand that. final. She was she was giving everyone a kiss and and uh, and she gave a particularly uh, uh, big one to Stacey Jones. But um, yeah. <laughs> um, what what is a number one ticket? What what is it for? What does it do? Um, it's hopefully Publicity. hopefully the club gets something out of it, whether it's exposure or financial backing. Uh, in some scenarios, it works both ways, as we've just seen and demonstrated with all of the politicians jumping on board. Um, what isn't it? It is not a reward for dedication to the club or recognition. Uh, that is what immortals are for, club legends, life memberships, ignoring the fact that the Sharks sold life memberships for a period there while we were on Struggle Street. Um, but it's it, it kind of... It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. The number of times I've had someone drunkenly wave their life membership pass in front of me, brag about it. It's like, yeah, mate, anyone could have got one of those. Um, <laughs> does does kind of mean that we needed to to create the club legend. Franco and pulled his out of his pocket. To... Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, one so, <laughs> the confetti laying on the ground. Yeah, there's one there too, mate. Uh, I raise uh, your life membership and here's my Leafs Club immortality status. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So, um, so yeah, so it's, you know, donating $5 million might not be enough. Um, or is it? I don't know. Um, who are our options? Hey, who, who stands out? Who have we got? Um, looking, at, looking at celebrities and, and well-known individuals. Um, there's uh, Corbin Harris, a former pro skater who is a host on ESPN and Fox Sports. Um, obviously with the push to the US, that could be a, a good little little thing for us. Um, Mark Zuzak, the, uh, uh, an author of a pretty prominent book, The Book Thief, turned into a film, uh, very well known. Um, Brendan Jones, uh, WSFM Breakfast, Jonesy and Amanda, he's already giving us pretty good publicity as far as I'm concerned. So I think, you know, he's kind of, kind of taken himself out of the running by doing the job that a number one ticket holder would do without having the, the title. Um, 
uh, Brendan Cowell, writer, actor, director of a bunch of stuff, um, ex-boyfriend of Rose Bryant. Um, so he's there. Glenn McGrath. Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne thank you. I, on um, Brendan Cowell, just on him. So he has been in uh, what the – this is – I heard on uh, SEN the other day when they interviewed him, but they were talking about uh, – so he's been on the biggest film series in recent years, Avatar. He's been in the biggest TV show of recent years, Game of Thrones. So – uh, he's up there, even he's though good. he was a he's big good. part. He's good, and he's a true Sharks tragic. Oh, he absolutely genuine. bleeds black, white, and blue. Um, Glenn McGrath, cricketer, my, my personal favourite cricketer of all time, um, absolute legend of the game, um, but also local Sutherland Shire cricketer and uh, now cricket commentator. Um, Samuel Johnson, another actor, uh, Probably well known for the Secret Life of Us, um, Lara Bingle. Could do a good, good voiceover. Could do a good voiceover, Lara Bingle. Um, Stuart Clark, another great ex cricketer, and by all reports, is a pretty savvy administrator these days. So, wouldn't be bad to have him close to the club in some ways. Uh, not that our current crop are doing poorly. Um, Shannon Knoll, a singer. Uh, David Faulkner, another singer, lead singer of the, uh, of the Hoodoo Gurus, uh, reportedly offered to do a song, a new song for the Sharks, new club song, and was turned down at some point in the past. Um, I don't know if he was looking for compensation for said song or if it was just, hey, how can you do better than Up Up Cronulla? Um, Dylan Wright, as mentioned by Lats, Australian's, Australian Idol, now through to the grand final, get your votes in. Um, obviously, he man of the moment. And we'll wrap that up with Mike Dorrell, CEO and co-founder of investment firm Stonespeak, has donated some money to the Sharks in the past and might be considered a good option. Uh, who are the ones that we are not considering? Who should not be looking at getting a, a run? As I mentioned I'm earlier, not- it's not... Oh, yes, go. I might sin bin myself because I know Baldo's just chafing at the bit to get back involved in this. It's business. <laughs> no, no it's leave politics. him gone. Leave him gone. He can come oh, back later. Uh, no, I'll, I'll let him sub in. My vote is Brendan Cowell, but uh, I don't know. It's, yeah, I think you need someone bigger, but I just I, I want to reward that that true passion, that uh, everything that he's about. Uh, he can bring a lot, a lot of good publicity to the club, but also, too, yeah, if there's if – there's, oh, man. Give him a pivoting to America if there's a lead in there somewhere. There's that guy from um, Jackass that was repping our gear recently. So Party Boy. 2011, Party, Party Boy. Chris Pontius. Yeah, anyway, I'll sub out. Boldo, you're back. Chat soon. <laughs> See you, Williams. Uh, who, who, are, who, are we not, who are we not offering? So as I mentioned, it's, it's not a, a reward or recognition for dedication to the club. So Sharks players, ex-players are, are out. Um, I... You know, would love to see Franco. someone like him. Yeah, it should be me. Uh, should it? Should it? Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's it's not a. Why not an isn't ex-player. it not me? It's not an every ex-player. year. Sharks. I am waiting to win that damn membership prize in that stand. And every time you give it to someone else, Dane Wheeler, I'm coming for you. I want my damn Armex <laughs> prize. Can we get Williams back or what? Um, maybe maybe if you handed the membership pack to Chris Kelly each year, it, um, you might be considered. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it. We, we'll bring uh, we're, we're also not offering it to um, Phil Gould, longtime Shire resident and media personality. No. Um, clearly, he's not in the running. We are not offering it to David Bolderman, our current host and pyramid schemer. What about um, his dad? And- <laughs> his dad's a celebrity fan on the Wikipedia page. Have you noticed, oh, you just noticed that now, Williams? That my oh, dad is a I've fan. known that for years. I just haven't given you the pleasure. I know you put that there yourself. I didn't actually. <laughs> we just went up there. <laughs> Magic. Uh, we're um, also I'm not thinking- giving it. We are also I'll not see- giving it in in the world of politicians. We are not giving it to Harold Holt. We have turned the porch lights off, and he is not coming to any. That would have been good. Though. That's that would have been quite a. Great. That would have been quite a good. Um, take. I think Franco, seriously, yeah. Chad, on the, the number one ticket holder, like you got to look what you're going to get out of it. And so um, I'll just correct you. Peter Costello was never number one. He was number two ticket holder to Kathy Freeman. He never held the number one. He was one. absolutely number one. And I will oh, he wasn't. You one. look it up. I'll take you. I'll bet you on that, Franco. He was not number <laughs> one. He was number two. 
Let's I'll do bet it. You. I'm with Franco on this one. I remember there was, he was a never number one. Absolutely, he was. He was. Oh, we'll see. We'll go maybe we're going well. Out. And we'll it was front video. page news of the Daily Telegraph. Very slow news day. It was like, hey, Peter Gosillo, what's going on about those sharks? And because he clearly didn't care, but he was still the number one ticket holder. And it was probably Buzz Rothfeld trying to make a story out of nothing. And then Kathy came from the clouds shortly afterwards, and Peter yep. was never seen again. He absolutely was, but that's okay. It'll, be, uh, be wrong again. it'll be Boldo's new title name will be um, You Can't Be Number One because he didn't know Peter Costello was a number one ticket holder. So that's how he loses out <laughs> in this position. Just like he's lost his mic, he's going to lose out in it. I lost my mic. I couldn't hear and I couldn't reply. Yeah. I'm going to prove you guys wrong. We're going to check this out. Um, but back to the, my point that I was going to make about the number one ticket holder, all jokes aside, is we want to use it for some sort of promotion or something or other or someone who – rightfully deserves the reward. I think putting it on someone for 10 years and then having them sit around and do nothing with it, I think is probably wrong. So I think a three-year term might be a good idea. And all jokes aside, um, look, I'm not saying that I should be the number one ticket holder, but some member of the Sharks who's been around for 50 years or something might be a really nice gesture. I saw at the Nottingham Forest Club uh, recently in the Premier League, they had a fan who's been uh, a fan for over 80 years and she's deaf. No, she's yeah. blind. That's right. Yeah. And they they had a they blind. took her onto the field and they sung the team song with her before the match and it was highly emotional. And so I think something like that for the community, I think would be quite a good move for us as the Sharks to put something back into the community or reward someone like our mate Dylan from Australian Idol. I think that would be pretty cool, especially if we were to get him to sing, um, you know, at a, an opener or the last match of the season. Um, and then maybe we don't need a politician this time around. Um, but yes, using it for something. I don't think we have to rush out and give it to anyone either, Franco, would be my... Yeah, mate. so given all that, yep. Yeah. Who should it be? I don't think, you know, no an anti-climax. I don't think it really needs to be anyone. No I'm one. leaning towards nobody. We can wait, hold off until someone stands out at the right time and place, or we just screw it and give it to Taylor Swift and see what happens. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> just give it to Taylor Swift. <laughs> actually, actually that, is, that is quite a good idea. And Zach, no, your comment isn't working. But that one is. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Taylor Swift has been. There's no swear in it. Shark, <laughs> the shoe sharks number one ticket holder. All right.